One thing I like to tell people is if you're trying to actually cook pumpkin and you and you're going to buy like a jack-o'-lantern pumpkin and you think right. to cook that is going to come out good, that's not. I mean, a jack-o'-lantern pumpkin's stringy, they're not they don't really have that much meat in them either. And when they cook, they're not really that that, that good. Well, let's talk about pumpkin. <laughs> let's talk about pumpkin. Have you had your pumpkin spice latte yet, Kara? <laughs> I haven't. Oh, good. But it's, it's, on, very... it's on my bucket list. Okay. Well, probably we should skip it because it's not very healthy to have pumpkin spice <laughs> latte. I'll, show, I'll tell you a healthier way you can make one. Yeah. Well, I make one at home. How well, about that? There you go. It's probably healthier than you're going to get at Starbucks. Totally. Yeah. So what we did, actually, we just made these up uh, this week for our, for our staff. We were just experimenting in a, in, a, in a pumpkin spice latte, right? What's in a latte is mostly milk. So for that factor, you can just use skim milk. You can use an unsweetened soy milk, right? Um, so this is one easy substitute. The pumpkin, I would just simply use, if you want to actually use pumpkin in there, and as opposed to just pumpkin spice uh, or both, uh, you, I would simply just use Libby's, right? Canned pumpkin puree. And just a little bit of it in there mixed in, but mixing a little pumpkin pie spice with that just gives you even more flavor. And in a pumpkin pie spice, you got cinnamon as the main component, allspice, nutmeg, clove, and usually uh, a little ginger as well. And um, you know, mixing that pumpkin, with a little bit of espresso, right? Like actually fresh brewed espresso that you didn't Ooh. add any extra sugar to or anything like that. To it. Yeah. That's you know what usually most coffee places do is give you espresso as the base for your latte. So you can make your own espresso, and you know just have a little bit of it as your base. I mean, I'm talking about usually it's like a small amount in the bottom. They put that uh, you know the um, the syrup usually also comes into play at a at a place like you know these coffee barista places are just usually like a like a, some sort of corn syrup base to sweeten that flavor of the pumpkin. Mm -hmm. But you can kind of, you know, sweeten your latte with Splenda. You could simply use Swerve. You can use, uh, you know, Truvia or something like that. And, and, and that way you get a little, you know, even just the pumpkin itself has sweetness, you know. So it depends on what your palate wants. But, you know, making it super sickly sweet is certainly not what we really want to go for. I totally agree. I, um, you know, every time of year when it comes around this time, you see pumpkin this, pumpkin that, pumpkin... And I'm always trying to think of new ways to include pumpkin. So um, I love the I love the latte idea. But I had another question for you because um, I was experimenting with this the other day and I thought it was really good. Um, I was making a pasta sauce uh -huh. and I um, put some pump like pureed pumpkin right in the sauce and it just made it like really thick and what kind of sauce were you um making? i was making like a marinara spaghetti sauce oh, really? cool. with some ground up turkey meat in there and i just i just took some pumpkin and i just think it's a really great way to kind of thicken we, thicken sauces up a bit like it, it seemed a little alfredo-y but yeah. um but well, it we, wasn't. Use, we use pumpkin puree all year long right here here at pritikin we're going through you know not a whole can but almost a half a can every single day we add it in our vegetable soup it depends on what we're making with it but we'll use it as as opposed to using tomato puree We'll actually use pumpkin puree and those, you know, with the vegetable broth to make our vegetable soup base. It gives it a little more sweetness, gives it a little more you know, thickness, and, and that body you're looking for. But also, you could use a combination of that in tomato puree. And it's, it's a good way to get it more flavor good. in a soup. You know, we even uh, were just discussing about how you can kind of try to use it as a um, as an alternative to egg, as an alternative to that's to, right. To oil. I saw that. And I tried it. And I made some like healthy herb brownies, and I and I put in there as my oil replacer. So I used absolutely no oil at all yeah, yeah. and um pumpkin, pu pumpkin it was puree. sweet and it was moist it was really really good i was really surprised it's a little learning curve to try to do it with like applesauce or pumpkin puree mm -hmm, to kind of get mm -hmm. that you know texture and you know that what you're looking for in the end but it's 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 a great alternative so if you can't you, you don't want to use you know whole eggs of course we don't want to use that try using egg whites or egg beaters but really you know, the fat replacement is is, is is certainly something you really want to try to get out, out of that recipe yeah, the yeah. fat you know, whether it be butter or oil and try using things like the applesauce or pumpkin puree. It's a good way to kind of get that overall lower in calorie density. Right. So. And by the way, I don't know if you realize this because I know you're all on the cooking side and I'm all on the nutrition side. But pumpkin is, um, first of all, it's super low calorie dense. It's like 50 calories a cup. So you could actually, you know, eat a lot of it, feel full. It's a fibrous. It's very fibrous as well. Yeah. So it's great for lowering cholesterol and help balancing blood sugars. Um, and it's also an antibacterial, so good for the immune system. So, I mean, I think that we should just be having pumpkin all year round. We don't just have to save it for fall, right? <laughs> if what do it you was think? up to my wife, they'd make like pumpkin toothpaste and pumpkin. <laughs> they probably uh, do. <laughs> you know, I mean, like this this woman like is like pumpkin out. You know, it's like she's actually got me to the point where I almost like 
dread seeing these things. So <laughs> I'm like, oh, pumpkin, everything. It's like, but I, I, I do like pumpkin, but it can be quite overwhelming this time of the year, where, especially agree. when they when it's like August and they're already putting pumpkin stuff out, you know. And some places just skip over uh, skip over Halloween, go right to Christmas. It seems like, <laughs> but um, you know, one, one 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 thing I like to tell people is if you if you're trying to actually cook pumpkin and you and you're going to buy like a jack lantern pumpkin and you think right, right. to cook that is going to come out good that's not i mean it's a jack lantern pumpkin good. stringy they're not you don't really have that much meat in them either and that's when they true. cook they're not really that, that that good i tell people to use either a spanish pumpkin a calabaza squash which is available mm. all year long um, usually they're very big so they usually cut them in sections and sell them you already cut up in a refrigerated section at the grocery store i mean i'm telling you these things are, are sometimes very big but butternut squash Butternut squash is available all year like long, candy. and it has a it. very similar flavor to just using regular I, pumpkin, especially if you roast the butternut squash, right? I mean, we have a roasted butternut squash soup that we serve here, splitting that thing in half with the skin on there, scoop the seeds out, put the cut side down on the tray that you spray a little bit, and roast it until about maybe you know, 30, 45 minutes until it's, you know, it's tender. Mm-hmm. You could eat to eat it like that, right? I mean, I wouldn't eat the skin of the butternut squash, but the inside... But there's some squash, like acorn squash, that you can eat the skin of, eat the whole thing. I've, what about, what do you think of, I've been really into delicata squash. Have you ever heard of delicata squash? You have squash? not. Oh, my oh, God. Just, okay, so teach I'm teaching something. chefs something here. So, so by the way, delicata squash, it's a smaller squash. Okay. And the skin is, is more delicate, so you actually don't have to peel the skin. Nice. So you could cut it in half, you scoop out all the seeds inside, and then you cut it in half again, and then you cut, like, these little... Um, half moons. Okay. And then I put those on the cookie sheet and put yeah, my little yeah. oil spray and my spice and roast it. Nice, nice. And literally I eat the skin. I don't even, yeah. I don't even take the skin off. And um, it's, um, it's just, in my opinion, it's easier to handle because it's not like this big old thing and you need this really strong you, you arm need and like strong a meat knife. To even cut into it. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. It's totally like yeah. anyone, anyone can handle it. And, um, and my favorite part is you don't have to peel the skin off. It's and it's really well. That and really acorn squash. Good. I mean, and, and honey nut squash is one that's available this time of the year. They look like little miniature butternut squashes, oh, but it's like been selected bread to give you sweeter, where you can eat the skin, and they're really very flavorful. Um, and they're a good size where you can actually eat the whole thing. Like this is serving as a vegetable, just you know, you know, cutting it in half, roasting it like the butternut squash. Uh, but having acorn squash sliced up and roasted, actually, you have a little seasoning on there, a little cayenne even on there, mm, and, and, eating the, and eating the skin. Of the of the uh, of the acorn squash, it's a great way to give you more color, gives you more flavor, gives more you more fiber, more, more of everything. Yeah, more I mean, we we'll eat the skin of everything here, except like you know pineapple skins. And stuff. Yeah, no, yeah, we, that's we draw a the line rough going down. We draw the line here sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> so, but the butternut squash uh, uh, soup that recipe that we serve here is great. I mean, you saute a little ginger, garlic, carrots, onions, and you know, add that little bit of vegetable broth into there, um, and take all your roasted squash and just cook it down. And about 30 minutes and then blend it up a little fat free sour cream, a little low fat cream cheese. It's a nice, creamy, delicious, low it's, fat, high sneak, energy. You can sneak soup. a little Parmesan cheese in there. Sneak just, just a little, little sprinkle. When Karen and Lon are not looking, they'll sneak it <laughs> now. Just a little bit. With a little bit is acceptable. But a small little dash, yeah, we yeah. put it in there as well. But yeah, that's that's those are the few things that we serve, you know, um, you know, just throughout the year. Um, but you know, butter, butternut squash, roasted acorn squash. But we leave a pumpkin pie. We have we have an apple cobbler that we serve throughout the year. Uh, so you can definitely make these things healthy. You know, we, we make a pumpkin pie, put a little bit of maple syrup, like actual pure maple syrup to kind of get that little, you know, that like burnt sugary kind of flavor mm-hmm. that it kind of tends to give. Um, we also put uh, the pumpkin pie spice, little egg beaters. We put, you know, splendid, a bit more sweetness, vanilla. And then uh, we, we put it in a, in a ramekin. We spray a little ramekin, put it down, and we make a little crust out of panko breadcrumbs and, 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 a, and a, um, a crispy brown rice cereal. You know, and the same Very thing with, nice. the, with the apple cobbler. You know, you can make peach cobbler, apple cobbler, whatever cobblers you want to do. You know, but, you know, you can certainly have these things throughout the year, not just during the holidays. Yeah. As long as we have you around to show us how to <laughs> jazz them up a little bit and be healthy and still taste amazing. S- somebody asked me today, they said, Chef, what are you going to, what are you going to uh, give kids during the ho- uh, Halloween? And, um, you know, I have two kids, my own. Remind so, me of their ages again? Seven and nine. So seven it's like nine. prime time Halloween. Prime you know? Halloween. Like, and, what uh, are they going to be for Halloween? That's what my, I want to know. My son wants to be like a video game character, Cuphead. And then uh, my, uh, it's like some weird, you know, it's a funny little cartoon game. And uh, looks like really old school, you know. Like, uh-huh. yeah, But anyway, like, and then my daughter is in like Disney movie Encanto, you know. It's like, and I'll dress up too probably, Aww. you know. But yeah, it's going to be fun. But, um, but, you know, somebody's like, what are you going to give them? Uh, you know, my kids, I try to make them not hate their dads. So they give them experience. You know, this is, 
this is Halloween. This is what we do. You know, we know, you know, we're going to walk around, get some bad candy, but I make sure they don't eat it all at one time. Right. I mean, they're kids and I want them. That's life. They're going to be exposed to these things. You just have to make sure they have it very, you know, small amounts. But what I gave out personally at my house, uh, what I gave out was, was Halloween little pencils. And, you know, I actually asked the kids. And I, I do this. So I was like, I don't want kids egg in my house where right, they get a pencil. Right, right, right. They're like, oh, this guy gave me a pencil. But I'll tell you what, 85% of kids last year when I gave them a Halloween pencil choice or like, you know, like I won't say what candy we were giving them. But, you know, again, it was like racy cups or something. And um, they, they were like, I'll take the pencil. So, like, it was something that nobody else was offering, and at least they can remember Halloween. And, you know, it was like a bulk pencil. It was like 150 wow. pencils I got. So, it was like something so silly, but it was like something that really is memorable. And at least they'll remember it. It's not something that's candy. Throw it away. Eat it real quick. You know, now they at least have a cool pencil all year long. So. Wow. I am very impressed that you actually did a study to make sure that it was, I, I it was actually a preferred was like, item. Click, click. How many pencils, how much candy was left? You know what I mean? Like I checked it. It was, it was. It's probably cheaper than all the candy that, I mean, candy's yeah. expensive by the way. Yeah, I mean, it is. I mean, you can always give kids, you know, apples and raspberry, you know, whatever you want to give them, you know, little peaches or something like that, a banana. But some kids might look at that and be like, uh, you know, and uh, I mean, I yeah. that's the healthiest yeah. option for sure. Well, actually, in my neighborhood, uh, when I used my kids are older now, but we used to take them around in our neighborhood. There was one house that had um, like a little popcorn station, okay. and they would give like little things of popcorn. But it actually <laughs> was just like air pop just, popcorn. Yeah, it wasn't it wasn't movie and... popcorn. No, and it was like they gave these cute little containers of popcorn, oh, that's and cool. I thought that was like a really yeah. decent good idea, and it. Um, made the whole little like area of the street. You smelled the popcorn popping. I thought that was a pretty that's good cool. idea. Well, yeah. Now you're giving me more ideas. Than the uh -oh. whole Maybe that's your away. next study. Yeah. Do, 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 <laughs> you want an air pop popcorn? Or, <laughs> or a pencil. <laughs> no candy this year at all. <laughs> oh, you know what? I actually um, been meaning to ask you, so I, I'll just ask you right now because I, I don't get to see you all the time. Um, what would you suggest for a guest that is um, wanting to use, uh, like if apple juice concentrate is on the recipe, mm -hmm. but they don't really have access to that where they live. It, what, what other I mean, alternative if would you, you really, use? For, first off, I'll tell you this. If you really want to use apple juice concentrate, just go buy apple juice and cook it down yourself. It's not hard to do. It's like you know, an hour of time it's going to take you to cook it and you know, certainly to cool it. But all apple juice concentrate is, is exactly what it sounds like. They've just taken apple juice and they've reduced it to concentrate it. So, you know, usually we, you know, most people would reconstitute that to make apple juice They to add drink. the water to it. And they right. add water, right? right. Um, but if you take apple juice and put it into a pot, it's just like making a balsamic glaze. You take the balsamic and you reduce it down, it becomes sweet, it becomes syrupy. Well, the same thing happens with apple juice. Okay. If you take apple juice and put it in a pot and just take it from this, you know, high to like down to you know, reduce it by about 75%. Um, and How long does that take? Uncovered takes about maybe like an hour, you know? Okay. It'll just keep boiling down, keep reducing. So you start off with say you know you know um, you know say you start off with 100 ounces you should end up with about 25 ounces okay. you know, so you're reducing okay. it by about 75 percent roughly and um, and that's it you can just keep that in the fridge for about you know about a week and a half or put it in the freezer and you know okay. of course if you can't find it you're like I'm not taking all that time shut up chef I'm not doing that you know right 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 what can I do I um, mean you can certainly use honey or maple syrup as an alternative I mean it doesn't work for every single recipe to give you the same flavor apple juice does because it works you know. We use it in like dressings. We use it. It was for the dressings sauces. that they were specifically wanting it for, but where they live, they don't really have access to the, the concentrate. The problem with the honey and the maple syrup is people are like they're used to using it, so like they're like a little bit, you know, with the apple juice, like oh, I'm apprehensive, never used it before. How much to put in? It's it's a little bit of a learning curve, and most people don't look at apple juice concentrate like it's a condiment, right? And they're going to look at it like it's like a is an ingredient that pretty good told me to use, and this recipe I'm going to use it here. Whereas if I tell you, hey, go home and you can use honey and maple syrup in recipes too, sometimes that's all people want to hear. And they're like, they they're like, freedom, la, 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 with their heads, with their hands over their and ears. They just and, like, like, and, they're, yeah, and they're loading everything up they can with yeah, too much yeah, maple yeah. syrup and honey because they thought pretty good said I can go use it. And sparing amounts, you know, just just like, you know, the, the, the sodium side of like Parmesan cheese and Dijon mustard and soy sauce. We use these things here in very small incremental amounts in larger volumes of recipes that we control by putting it into the back. By putting when we cook it in the back, if I gave someone a ramekin of soy sauce, they would just go boop and put it all into their food or just dip their food into it, consuming way too much direct sodium. Just like you know, if you're doing maple syrup, if you ask me for maple syrup or honey for a tea, people are going to just pour it right into right, there and just right, use right, right. too much excess amount. 
So that, those are the things you have to realize. Just use it very sparingly if you're going to use it because it's very sweet. Okay. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let them know the long way and then the short way. <laughs> There's and let them decide. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, I was, I was working with a guest um, just yesterday and um, she lives out of the country. And she's like, you know, we don't, we don't have that apple juice concentrate in, the, in our local grocery stores. And um, I said, okay, well, I'm going to talk to Chef about that because I, I would have probably said, you know, you could use honey or maple syrup. But um, other than that, I really, I really wasn't sure how else, you know, to, to have them be able to do that without, you know, buying it here and bringing it to their country or something yeah, like I mean that. But. There are there are some brands that sell apple juice concentrate where it's shelf stable, right? And that way, it's it doesn't need to be refrigerated or fr or, or okay. frozen until it's been opened up. Right, um, right. You know, there's there's like Nestle makes one called Vitality, and 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 you know you can find it. It's hard to find sometimes. You more like you can find these things online, and right, ship right, it right. To you, you know, and, and that's fine because it's shelf stable. So don't feel like you can ever ever find it. You know, if you're out of the country, that could be another question. But being out of America, it can be a struggle to find certain things, especially like fat-free and low-fat products. Oh right? yeah, like forget about it. The cottage cheese without the salt. That's, that's not only. Happening. That's yeah, not. I mean, it's not happening. It's yeah. not happening. And, and so you have to realize that those are things. If you're going to use, you know, sour cream, and you can't find low-fat, can't find fat-free. Well, if you're going to use it, maybe try using yogurt. If you can find yogurt as a yogurt. Yeah. You know, if you're going to use a sour cream, use it very sparingly. You know, the, yep. the thing is, you have to use what you have access to. But you can always usually make healthier modifications. Like I said, you could probably get fat-free yogurt, at least the low-fat yogurt, as opposed to yep, yep. sour cream, a little more hard. Yeah, absolutely. And just maybe mixing the yo the low-fat or fat-free yogurt with a little bit of the higher-fat sour cream, they'll get the same kind of mouthfeel yeah. and texture, and they'll really be dumbing down the fat. And um, you could even use silken tofu, right? They gotta get that they get that creamy aspect that you want. Which now you're adding more of the protein. You're adding really, you know, there's no fat at all, and it's it's, it's a great plant way to, based. Yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a good way to kind of get that creamy aspect. I tell people all the time: if you're vegan or you're vegetarian, you want to keep it, you know, totally, you know, dairy free. Silk and tofu is a great way to go in, in, in certain things, but it has to be blended up smooth, and it has to be silk tofu. It can't I, be the firm. <laughs> <laughs> well, the, the thing is with, to, with with tofu. When I first started working here, it was, it was weird. I was like, what's this says firm? The other one says firm. One says silk. One doesn't. If it's silk tofu, there's different levels of how silky it is. Mm. There's soft, there's firm, there's extra firm. If it's silk, it's silk tofu. It's creamy, it's smooth when you blend it. Right, Whereas right. if it does not say silk and it just says firm or extra firm, usually it's packed in more water. Usually that one's the refrigerated one. Um, and um, you, you, those are the ones you sear off it as steaks or something like that. Or like grill foods. it or stir fry correct, it. Correct, correct, yeah, correct. Yep, correct. Yep. I actually couldn't find silk tofu one year, like a decade ago. I was like... A friend of mine had a vegan girlfriend. And he invited him over for Thanksgiving, and she's like, "Oh, you know, can you make me a, can you make her a vegan option?" And I was like, "Yeah, sure." You know, so I made her like a, um, it was a, a sweet potato mousse. You know, but we're using it with, um, and roasted sweet potatoes are great, right? Right, those kind of similar mm. flavors like roasted pumpkin. Mm -hmm. uh, but 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 anyway, I couldn't find it, so I was like, "Let me just try to blend up the regular tofu. I'll get straight a little bit." Nope, you Didn't can blend work. that thing for ten years. It'll never get smooth, you know. That's it's gritty. interesting. I've not, yeah. I've actually made that um, the vegan Caesar dressing with the silken tofu, yeah. and um, I used the the crispy um, chickpeas for the croutons. Nice. And um, I didn't just put lettuce in my Caesar salad. I put a bunch of other vegetables. And there you go. Um, yep. So that's how you jazz up a Caesar, right? You don't have to have Caesar dressing. You don't have to have croutons. You can just kind of we make it do your Caesar own thing. Then. Yeah, no, I love the, I love the Caesar dressing here. I copied it and, and made it for some, for some friends at home. And they were like, wow, this is really good. I said, guess what? No fat in that. Yeah, you don't need eggs and oils and anchovies. No that oils, make a, no make a healthy eggs. Caesar salad. Yeah, no, it was really impressive. That, I think that that tofu is, um, kind of underestimated a little bit. I don't know when I do a lot of my lectures and I talk about the plant-based proteins and I talk about tofu, people are actually, um, they're a little bit scared of the tofu. Number one, they don't, they don't know, they're not familiar with how to cook it. And number two, there's a lot of information about, um, soy that is controversial re regarding, you know, breast cancer or, um, boys getting what they call man boobs, things yeah, like yeah. that. So I, I have to talk about it a lot because um, I think that what's going on in the industry is we use a lot of soy isolate, processed soy and right. um, different food supply, like a lot of salad dressings, for example, um, if you if you go to the grocery store and you look at the labels, I would say 
I would say probably like 75% of the oil-based salad dressings, the first ingredient is soybean oil. Oh, really? which is a which is a very refined oil yeah. and so if you have that in so many different things then yes we are consuming too much soy and we're not really realizing it yeah. but when you're eating the silken tofu or the firm tofu um, or the soy milk these are these are whole soy products and they have some really really good benefits you know um, they're antioxidants they're they're plant-based they're fibrous um, there's no saturated fat in them and so you know sometimes I think, we take a little shred of evidence of something that is negative, and then we we like kibosh the people whole entire will, people plant. Will run, people will run with it with what would they want to exactly. hear and kind of make it their own. Yeah. Belief. So like, um, I actually had somebody just tell I'm me defending the, other day. the soy. I'm defending the soy. <laughs> I mean, you have to. You have to. I mean, just in my class today, I did a mango so soya stew. You know, and you know, the so soya is a product where it's like TBP, like textured, textured vegetable, vegetable protein. Yep. And you know, if you call it TBP, you're like, what the heck is that? Some scientific <laughs> stuff, you know, but. It looks like, you know, one we use here, or two different ones we use here, one looks like soy crumbles. We're actually serving our meatballs today, making with that. And then we also have the one that looks like a big chunk. It looks like a big chunk of chicken. So if you're having trouble kind of eating the tofu and you want to have more variety where you're having thinking things taste and feel like meat. Like more sauce, and it's more know? saucy too. Yeah. It's like a nice sauce in there. Yeah, well, yeah, we'll cook it with a nice sauce. But the texture of the soy soya product itself has more of a meatier texture than what tofu will give to you. You know, right, and I always tell people right. if you're, Struggling with the tofu, try using something else. It's like a good idea. Like so it's and, like and a ground meat type of feeling. Either the ground one or the big chunky one. They both have a more meatier substance to it than than what tofu is ever going to deliver. But they have the same, pretty much the same benefits, you know. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Lots of options when it comes to soy. Lots yeah. of options. Just don't get the isolate. Don't get the soybean oil. Get the whole. How do we start soy. talking about soy milk and all these other soy stuff? But we're talking about, about pumpkins. Oh, by the way, there was one there was one other funny little um, tidbit of information about pumpkin. Um, I have two dogs and um, any time that we change their food, um, they, they say to put pumpkin in the food okay. to help them adjust to the new food because pumpkin's actually very nice on, on the digestive process and okay. for humans too, but for dogs apparently. So... I just wanted to add that in for anybody that has dogs out there. Like if you're changing their food, um, it, it, it's a good idea to put some of the, the old food, some of the new food, and then mix it with a little pumpkin and it helps them adjust a little bit better to the, a dietitian to the and new a veterinarian. food. <laughs> How about that? I thought that was pretty cool. That is cool. I, I don't ever heard that, but yeah. you know, I'll have it's to, a thing. I'll have to, if I ever get Check a dog again, out. it's twitching his diet, I'll try it out. But pumpkin across the board is awesome. I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a good Good thing. for everybody. It's good for everybody. And for by sure. the way, it's really good on the face too. I'm doing- hold up, um, hold up. You're doing pumpkin facials now? No, but I, but I am <laughs> doing, we have a Women's Health Week coming up in uh -huh. um, like late October. Okay. And um, I'm doing a whole little uh, talk about um, food and aging, how, okay. how food could help us um, with our aging process and- you know, help us with our wrinkles a little bit, get that glowing skin. Um, so I've been doing a lot of reading and um, there's all these amazing masks that you use with pumpkin because this pump, there's enzymes in the pumpkin um, that are really, really good for the skin and help, you know, with the wrinkles and-, and But it's like a mask already that's been- Well, you, you can, I mean, you could buy it and spend okay. a whole lot of money on the mask or you could actually, there's all these do-it-yourself masks where you add, things like honey and oatmeal and pumpkin okay, okay, okay. and you kind of like mix it up and like honestly whatever is really good inside of your body for the most part is good for yeah, the outside right. of the body so um you can just I'll picture be, myself I'll taking be, a can of pumpkin tray rubbing it on my rubbing face it all like, over your it's face. not working Kara. it's not working <laughs> it actually no but the funny thing is if you don't cut it with something and you just use the pumpkin it's um it will burn I mean, it has oh, like okay. these things, these enzymes in it that are like, I don't know. <laughs> they, yeah, no, it's like, it's, I mean, food is medicine. Yeah. It, it is true. For sure. True. I agree. I so agree. I don't know how we got to talking about that. Well, food anyway. is medicine. I think that's where we'll leave it at. I mean, we'll just leave it at that. We'll leave it at food that. Food is medicine. I mean, we could talk about pumpkins and uh, bad stuff. Uh, and tofu. Uh, Halloween all day, you know, but uh, oh, one other thing we'll talk about actually, which I love to, to actually just, you know, just to point out. A recipe that we have here called a butterscotch pudding, right? I mean, it's mm, very, very much you know, something. Sweet. It is. I mean, there's a butterscotch in it, right? But when you roast sweet potatoes, like we talked about earlier, wash them, wrap them in foil, and roast them. And uh, about an hour, maybe an hour and a half, but roast them. Because if you microwave the sweet potato or boil it, you will not get the same caramelization mm. out of that sugar that happens when you roast the sweet potato. 
Um, but you know, when you when you wrap it in foil, make sure it's still damp so it cooks more evenly in the oven. Uh, okay. if it's totally dry when it's wrapped in foil; it doesn't cook as nicely. So, uh, but okay. cook it on parchment paper, yeah. or, or 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 put it on a tin foil down or aluminum foil down okay. on your tray. Because once that sugar oozes out of the potato, right, it goes all over the foil. You'll be scraping it off of your I normal know. sheet tray. Been there, done that. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. Save yourself some cleanup, and then okay. uh, so you can just eat it like that as a side, you know. You, but you can make a uh, the butterscotch pudding where we actually take yogurt, a little lemon juice, a little bit of maple syrup, and all that roasted soup potato. Uh, we take the skin off and puree it up. We serve it a little bit of a maple cream sauce, a little bit of a, like a homemade granola type of thing, and it's it's great. You know, it gives you a little crunch from that little crispy granola. You, you hear my that. stomach rowling right now? Well, that's wild, man. Something about you today. <laughs> Is I don't it know. lunchtime? I got, <laughs> it's 12.30. We're good. We can go to lunch now. That's it. Well, actually, I have to go. We're doing a cooking like a pro thing today. We're making soups in our class today, so I'm sure one of them will, somebody will encourage them to make the roasted butternut squash uh-huh. soup. Uh-huh. Yeah. But we have tons of different things that we'll serve here all throughout the year, from white asparagus bisque to whatever it may be. We try to give you a good variety if you ever come visit us at the center. In the, yes. And um, make sure that you come and get me when you finish that butternut squash soup so I can be a taste Try it tester. Out. Try it out. Yeah, Absolutely. That's Absolutely. actually my favorite soup of, you like of all of the soups is the butternut squash I'll soup. I'll tell you what, a few months ago, some guy, he was making it in one, when I cooked in like a pro class. And, and um, he's like, chef, can I put a little Parmesan cheese in it? I was like, yeah. I was like, yeah, don't go crazy here. you know. And uh, so I told him, I gave him, measured out a little bit. And then he, when I wasn't looking, he went and grabbed the bottle out of the fridge. <laughs> And he poured more. It and doesn't I, need it, though. Yeah, it, it doesn't, doesn't it need doesn't, it at it doesn't, all. It doesn't, it's so good. It yeah. It really is good. Yeah. So, I mean, you know, but certainly people are used to those things, you know. So, yeah, people kind of get hard to get out of their comfort zone. So, but uh, you have to really control that, you know, those sodium things, those sugary things. Use them in small amounts if you're going to use them. And, um, you know, just yeah. keep it, keep it, but, keep yeah. the mindfulness. I, I think, I think the premise of everything that we're talking about is that there's so many ways to use other food products to mimic something else to get a really, really nice flavor, mouthfeel, texture, yeah. but with no sugar, salt, and fat. I think it's I'm not totally sure if I possible. mentioned to you before, but the chickpea, you know, canned chickpeas, the the the, the juice that they are packed in. Oh, aqua, aqua fava. Yeah, it's yeah, like yeah, a whole, yeah. like, whole bunch of recipes for it. But you could actually, I didn't believe this the first time I read it, but if you take chickpea, canned chickpea juice, and whip that up in like a whipper, in like a like a mixing machine. It turns. It looks like egg whites. It's, well, it's yeah, it is an thing. egg. It is it's a, it's an egg, egg replacer yeah, yeah. for uh, vegans or vegetarians. Correct. But yeah. even whips up, which was like I was my mind was. You blown. tried it, yeah, I was yeah, like, yeah. No way, no way. It's you know, whip up. it's so funny that you said that because I was just reading about that, and I know about it, but I actually haven't experimented. So I'm going to have to do that when I make my pumpkin uh, brownies. I'll yeah. use pumpkin for my oil. And I'll use aquafaba for my egg. Well, t- talking about chickpeas, I'll tell you real quick. I just ordered black, uh, black butte chickpeas. They're totally black, like black beans. Black. And you know, I've only used them once in the past, and they're really nice. People, most people are like, "What are these burnt chickpeas?" You know, <laughs> they're Interesting. great. They look like black. They look like they're regular chickpeas, but they're just black, like black beans, and they're kind of a little bit more hard to find. But if you look online, you can definitely source them. But you serve that as black chickpeas with a little bit of like a. Soup potato, you have the little orange and black thing That's going pretty. on, you know. Like it's it's like, Halloween. Halloween. You know, cantaloupe <laughs> or papaya on skewers with blackberries, you know, like you gotta get that orange and black theme going ideas. on. Good you ideas. Know? You got some good ideas. Well, not everything. No, it is a good idea. I think yeah. we, we we have a, a good team here, which we have a contribution because, you know, I might come up with an idea and then we you know, might make it better. Speaking of <laughs> Hickama wraps. We'll get to it. We'll get to the Hickama. We'll get to the Hickama. Okay, I think we're we'll gonna talk sh- about Hickama. We're gonna shave Hickama. Hickama. Probably thin with a mandolin and achieve the same thing. Okay. Because buying this wrap was a little bit more. Is it expensive? It's just I wasn't able to source it. But I think if you take jicama, we've actually been experimenting with it. By the way, Kara's asked me to source jicama wraps here <laughs> as opposed to like a tortilla wrap. But like rice paper is a good alternative as well. Uh, but we have to find those jicama wraps. This can be, you, know, you or some, you had them at Trader Joe's, yeah, is that right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, commercially, I couldn't find them. So we're going to slice them and try to you know roll them up ourselves as a little jicama See how it works out. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. cool, cool. Yeah. I mean, yeah, lots of stuff. Yeah, we, we're trying to change the menu up a few months here, kind of add and take things away, and you know, keep it fresh here, and uh, you know, that way we can keep on your toes keeping with your it, palate, keeping it fresh. Palate changing. Yeah, keeping it fresh. Yeah, because we keep we actually keep having the people come back and back and back, which is great. So they love all the new menu, menu items that they've been that you've been bringing on because I've been talking to the guests from the past that come now and they're like, Oh my God, you have this now. And you have this now. You didn't have this before. And yeah. so, um, w- one more thing. Up. I, I can keep thinking of things of pumpkin in my head as I keep mm. going on, but we'll have to end this podcast at one point. 
pumpkin puree can be used in oatmeal, right? In the morning, uh-huh. all throughout the year, we have a little pumpkin puree that we add a little dash of maple syrup to and pumpkin pie spice, and we'll have that as an option with our oatmeal toppings bar as opposed to the fruit compotes. Maybe you want a pumpkin oatmeal, you know? I love it's it. Great. It's I a love nice it. way to kind of get that yep. little extra variety. You can put, I mean, literally pumpkin in everything. I I actually um, put pumpkin in overnight oats. Is that so right? I do the, I don't, I don't cook the oats. I just, I put the, a little bit of the almond milk in or soy milk or whatever milk base, the oats, and then I add my fruit. But sometimes like this time of year when pumpkin's all happening, I'll add a little bit of pumpkin in there and the pumpkin spice and some cinnamon. Nice. It goes really well with the oats. Yeah. It's good. I mean, you, you have to try using some more stuff, folks. You know, if you're not using pumpkin, you, you're, you're missing out, you know, uh, yeah. and use it all year. Don't use it yeah. only like the, these three well, months of the year. because by the way, now it's hard to find because everyone's buying it. So yeah. just stock up later, you know, like when it's not the fall oh. or Halloween time and I, have I, it for Halloween. I've learned my lesson years ago. Yeah. I bought like eight cases, like eight big, you know, eight, they, they come in like six cans each case. I bought them like a month oh, ago. Oh, you're smart. Yeah. yeah. It was like last year, like, you know, from a whole month of October, you can't find pumpkin no, 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 cans. No, 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 you can't. You definitely can't. 